Hi, this is Jeff at Slavens Racing. And this video is about how to set the spring preload on the new uh, WP4CS fork. 4CS stands for four chamber system. This fork comes on the 2013 Husabergs, all of them, and the 2013 KTM ISDE models. Uh, Europe and a lot of other countries got uh, a KTM ISDE model. We did not get that model in the US. So, this uh, is not that dissimilar from other models of WP forks, and I'm going to give you a kind of an easy way and then, and then the correct way. So if you buy a set of springs from, from us or someone else, what you need to know is that the total spring length, including the spacers, uh, the factory setting is 470 millimeters. So they, the factory says that this spring is 465, but when I measure it, I've got a metric tape measure, when I measure it, they're actually 467. And so it's got two one and a half millimeter spacers here. These are the same style spacers used in the uh, closed cartridge fork. This is the open cartridge fork style spacer. We have these for sale here at Slavens Racing. Uh, we don't have them on our, on our website yet, but we will in the very near future. And if you need them, you can call in and, and request them. So it's got two one and a half millimeter spacers plus, or added on to the end of the spring. So the way you would measure the, the total length is obviously just put those, I'm trying to do this to where the camera can see. And this actually ends up being about 471. So these, the kind of the, the problem with doing this, even if you buy a new set of springs and you just want to pull them out and put in some new ones, you can either assume what the spaces are inside there, I mean, because they, they're different on, in the, at least in the past, uh, you never know for sure what's in there. There's, could, and that reason is, is because all springs don't end up the same length when they wind them. So even though they say 465, <clears throat> these are 467s. You know, they could be right on the money at 465. They could be 464. You just never know. Um, if Probably if you measured the, the stock spring, you could, and you know that they, they're aiming at a total length of 470, you could figure out what, what spacers are sitting down here in the oil. Because it's going to be a problem to get these out if they're sitting down in the oil. The oil is going to make them kind of stick down there and... <coughs> you won't really have a way to get them out easily because here's where they fit in the fork and the spring fits here so the correct way is to actually take this cartridge out which is a little bit of a pain because it does require a special tool to drive it out we will have that, that tool in the near future now the easiest way like I said would be to try to make a calculation and figure out what spacers are probably down there in the oil and then adjust accordingly. But the correct way to do it would be to have the cartridge out of the fork. The fork cap uh, has a, a, a guide here for the spring. It's off here a little bit. It just slides down inside the spring and the fork spring sits down inside of it. So you can't really measure from the end of the spring to the other end of the spring because it's down inside the cap. And if you want to add spacers, say if you ride your bike and you decide you want to add a couple millimeters of preload to it, you can just pull the cap off and slide this and have it sit down inside the cap. So the way I'm going to do it here, because this fork does not have any, this cartridge doesn't have any oil in it, so the, the spindle assembly is going to tend to just want to fall down if I Try to slide the spring down. I'm going to grab it with a special tool, a special pair of pliers that I have. Um, you could grab it with a pair of needle nose or just about any kind of plier. I'm going to screw the spring down enough to where I can get the cap started. I'll just put it on a couple of turns and let loose. So at this point, the spring is, is, is loose on here. So it has a negative preload. So what I'm going to do is 
turn the cap until I get rid of that free play where it's just setting at zero. So you, know, you got to make a judgment call here. But I'm going to let's do a little bit loose. I want to call that that good right there. Then you just measure. Uh, you can't measure from one end of the spring to the other, like I said, because the spring's up inside the cap. So you can just use any reference points. So I'm just going to use this groove where the O-ring is down here. This where this blue O-ring is. Put my tape measure in there. Just kind of slide it into that slot. I'm going to measure to the bottom of the cap here. Now you can measure to the top of the cap. You can measure to wherever you want, just a reference point. So it's 466 on this. If I screw the cap down until it bottoms against this nut here, which it has. And take another measurement from the same two reference points. Now I've got 460. So it actually has six millimeters of preload. I should probably back up a little bit and explain what preload is. Preload is just how much the spring is preloaded, it's how much it's compressed. So, in other words, the spring uh, in this fork, with the fork off the bike, without any weight of the bike on it, the spring is going to have it's going to be pre-compressed or preloaded six millimeters. And what that can do is affect uh, how the bike steers. You know, if it has more preload, the bike's going to be up in the travel a little more and uh, steer slower. If it has less preload, it's going to knife and steer sharper. But uh, preload goes way beyond that. There's a lot of reasons for changing preload. And I tend to adjust the shock instead of the fork preload when I want to make a change in the chassis balance. Because that's what we're talking about here is the chassis balance. How the front and the back end are having them matched. And this cap on this fork, and unlike like an open chamber fork, does not have an external preload adjuster on it. So the only way you can change the preload is internally. Uh, this is a special spring in these four CS forks. Some companies are selling springs from Japanese forks and then selling yeah, extra spacers to make the length correct. Uh, I have a couple of problems with that. One is you're going to end up with too much preload, too many preload spacers in here, and this uh, and it could could allow the spring to kind of flop around. Uh, also, you're talking about the wrong rating system. Japanese springs are rated in kilograms, and WP springs are rated in newton meters. The ratings are not identical, like some people think. Newton meter ratings are stronger. So if you're changing from a 42 newton meter spring to a 44 kilogram spring, you've really only gone up a half a size. You've gone up to about a 43 newton meter, maybe a little more. So it's best just to go newton meter to newton meter, apples to apples when you're changing springs. Um, another problem I have with using a Japanese spring is most of them don't test correctly. Most of them on the weak side, especially ones from some of the well-known American spring retailers, their, their, their rates are a mile off. In other words, if it says 44 on the box, you're lucky if it tests 43. So you know, make sure you buy quality springs for a quality product. These new WP forks are excellent and do not cheap out by buying poor quality springs. Doesn't make sense. That's all for now. Thanks.